Hey, everybody. I'm just, uh, just checking in. What have I missed? Um, what's, what's been going on? I'll start. Um, I just got back from the years I was in throat doctor who told me that I have tonsillitis, which is extremely contagious. And she cannot allow me to go back on the stage through the weekend um, until I have enough antibiotics in my system to not be contagious anymore. I cannot wait to do my last two weeks. And you just, you gotta laugh at a certain point. Um, when it rains, it pours on your old pal Bean. I just can't even, excuse me, I need to go kill myself. Come on, if you know the words, let's go. What do I think of her? Yes. I don't think of her. Bless a red wine and a swisher. I think you get the picture. Here I go. Oh. Ready about that in the New York fucking post. We are here for a very special episode today. I am local gossip Joan Summers. And this is your local artist and Matthew Lawson. And we are joined today by the illustrious Olivia Craighead, staff writer at Gawker. Olivia, why don't you tell the girls and gays a little bit about yourself? Oh my gosh, hello. First of all, an honor to be here. Um, I am a writer for Gawker.com. I live in New York on the other side of the country from you guys. And I am obsessed with gossip and musical theater. So I feel like I'm in the right place at the right time. You're oh, right at home. This is absolutely <laughs> the right place. We're so glad that you have internet in the bunker your team is hiding you out in. I know. Leah and Michelle's I, snipers are circling well, overhead. Leah, Leah and Beanie's snipers are kind of after me right now. So I have to be <laughs> like doubly safe. There's a war going on. Yeah. It's in one of those like old school 1940s musicals where you have your on the ground reporter in black and white banging yeah, down exactly. your door from the Daily Beast right now. <laughs> no, it's like it's like. Chris Christine Baranski from the Chicago movie being like <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's gonna be a rip from the headlines uh good wife episode sooner rather than later <laughs> so we're here today to talk about something we talked about very briefly last week we kind of teased that we were gonna get into the Beanie Feldstein Leah Michelle Gleek renaissance chaos disaster and confusion but we were gonna wait a little bit to kind of let the chips fall where they may and I would say the chips have not fallen they've been crunched underfoot into the carpet you know they've been ran over by every mice in your house and we're just really picking at the scraps at this point everyone is in their separate bunkers we're safe Olivia you're here today specifically because you wrote a story for Gawker about Leah Michelle's appointment to the Funny Girl revival on Broadway. Just before we even get into that story, <laughs> what is your relationship like with Leah Michelle, with Glee? Are you a, a longtime Glee, a recovering Glee? Okay, so. You should ask everyone we bring on the show this question. That is actually a really good, way. like, getting to know you question. It's like, yes. what is your relationship to Glee? Because that will tell me everything. Everything's about how we are going to relate to each other. But my relationship with Leah Michelle goes back to Spring Awakening because I was obviously I a big Spring Awakening, big Venla stan. Yes. And so then she was cast on Glee and I was like, I know that girl. I didn't know any of those other people, but I was like, I know Leah Michelle, of course, because I know Mama Who Bore Me. Um, yes. And then obviously I was uh, a freshman in high school when Glee premiered. So obviously I was like, the prime oh, yeah. demo um yes. and i like was obsessed with it at my high school they started a glee club because of glee so they were like and it was like the popular kids the popular kids at my high right school now. started a glee club did you start one <laughs> okay. i was gonna say i think jim was like active high member of her <laughs> uh, glee club I don't. Do we remember the exact year that Glee started? I want to say 2009. It was, was yeah, I was so gonna say, I, we were we all at the same, same time, age. same yes. place. All freshman yeah. year of high school. <laughs> My freshman year of high school also Glee started. Um, I am a recovering theater major, but also former drama kid. President of the Thespian Society, three years running. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, we started a failed Glee club because the school would not let us sing 
the infamous Rent graduation song. Um, oh, good God. <laughs> seasons because, of Love? Yes, we could not sing Seasons of Love because it was from an inappropriate musical. Um, oh, but my no, we God. would wear the first two years of Glee at least. <laughs> That's coded. My other, the only other gay kids I knew in high school would wear red shirts on Wednesdays when Glee would air on Fox.com. Oh, my Fox. God, I forgot com. about not that. Not Fox.com, just Fox TV. We wore the red shirts. We were like in the trenches listening to the season one soundtrack you know we were right there forefront of it all um it caused irreparable brain damage i would say i think that like glee stays with you even when you are no longer with glee or it is with us like the spirit lives I, on yeah I, think. I also think it's like for people who were our age when glee came out yes. it is like in our blood in a way where like i'll be on tiktok and i'll see a zoomer <laughs> be like have you guys heard of glee this is kind of crazy and i'm like you guys don't understand you are yeah, not they like, really no. were not there yeah and it was like, you guys were too. no i was gonna say it was oh, different i was gonna say too. were you in the no Matt, were you, you in the club olivia I'm sorry, i was not in the club this. i'm not oh, okay i'm not a singer and it was like the kids the grade above me so like their popular kids all were like we're gonna start a glee club and this that is how big so this... cursed the popular kids yes. doing it no that's it was wrong. It's it was so, so wrong. cursed and my friend drew uh auditioned for it and he's like a fine singer but he was like our school's kurt and i'm almost positive that they let him in because they were like well obviously we need a kurt for our glee club <laughs> oh, absolutely. and so it was like it was like the great above me's popular kids and then my friend drew also there for some reason and i would just go to their shows and be like what what is going on here like they would do mashups they did the whole thing and they wore like matching outfits they were trying to do show choir but without any understanding of like actual show, show choir, choir. Tales. yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like with glee also it's much different now watching it in hindsight because that was also right when i first discovered what tumblr was like tumblr in 2009 was a much different beast than tumblr in 2011 when yes i think the show really took off but it was like the wars that we were having on Tumblr, I think, are only paralleled now by the ironic shit posting do about people do about Riverdale. But it's not the same because it was not ironic. We were like completely black pilled teenagers, like fighting no, in the serious trenches. emotional, like, like oh, and your emotional state was tied to each other. Yeah, episodes, right? and when Selena like versus claim, like we were. Yeah, we were I was gonna say when Bl- when Blaine showed up. Tumblr like exploded. Like exploded. there was, was no stopping clane shippers from yeah. doing their thing with their gift sets and their fan fiction and all of it. Yeah, and there's like even worse, I think it was I'm gonna butcher the name because um it has been so long and this is one thing i have thankfully f- fully detoxed from but when you were watching glee it was also not just glee but it was the unique alchemy of glee and the super who lock and then also the like star yep. kid productions on youtube you know like. we we actually like cannot get into star kid because we'll be here for like <laughs> three more hours like i can't no i know oh but my that's God. the thing oh my the God. whole swirling yes. alchemy of it contributed to like a level of chaos in our undeveloped teenage psyches that has oh not been gosh. replicated again like no like these kids today today do not understand no. what that felt like like when darren again when darren chris harry potter showed up on glee it was like for some people the world exploded and it was so hard to explain <laughs> what had happened to like a normal person darren chris and his 27 year old bald spot um <laughs> truthers the truthers are out there among us um, so we're gonna go through just a really quick timeline of events and so for those of you who have been living under a rock or i guess don't know any gay people in real life leah michelle is probably the most famous to date broadway aspirer i mean we don't want to devalue the fact that she was in spring awakening once upon a time but glee really acted as a extended audition tape for what leah and at the time ryan murphy who at one point had the rights to the funny girl musical um saw as like the next broadway hit making machine so all the way back in the early 2010s leah was doing funny girl numbers on the show 
and at the Tonys. Famously, there is a clip, we won't get into it too much, but there is a clip of her singing to Beyonce and Jay-Z that became a famous meme on the early internet of Beyonce making the most, (laughs) like, laughing in someone's face while smiling faces I've ever seen a celebrity accomplish. Um, It is, to this day, something that lives on in my brain ran free. But anyway, so that was going on, right? Decade passes by, they announced that Funny Girl's coming back, and in August 2021, they announced that Beanie Feldstein, who had been in Booksmart, and had been in Booksmart... She had done Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. There we go. Yes. Oh, yes. (laughs) So, they announced that she was going to be on the role. Some, like, Broadway truthers and, like, deep stands pointed out that her father was going to be one of the producers. Maybe not, like, the main producer, but her father was involved in the casting production. And so, you know, that was a little bit of tittering on the early internet. And then by April 2022, she debuts on the show and critics universally pan the show. Like, universally out the gates. They have nothing nice to say about Beanie. It trackles down through the internet. TikTok gets a hold of it. Clips go wild. And things are pretty much off to the races by the end of April. People are sharing the bad reviews. And in all of the bad reviews, I mean, there's a lot of things to critique about the show, but the cornerstone of those reviews is that Beanie is not yet at a point where she could carry a show like Funny Girl, both vocally and in her performance of... um, I am forgetting the main character of Fanny Fanny Bryce. Fanny Bryce. There we go. Yes. Thank you. This is why we have an expert on. And then by (laughs) June 17th, the New York Post reports that Leah Michelle, and this is like deep, deep rumor by June 17th, nothing besides what the New York Post had said was even confirmed. And they have like the most tenuous of sources, it seems like. It is like she's in the mix, right? It was not an announcement. No one had anything verifiable to say. Then... On June 30th, Gawker slash Olivia drops a story that Leah was (laughs) going to replace Beanie. And this is where things really explode. Exploded. I don't want to talk too much about it. I would rather have you explain what was that like in that moment, getting that source, but also publishing that story and seeing the like immediate aftermath of that story on Broadway, internet and beyond. Well, the thing is, is that I actually didn't see a lot of it because it was June 30th. It was the end of the day. I was about to go on vacation for the 4th of July. So I like sort of near the end of the day got this tip and was like, can this wait till Monday? Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like it's because it there. was already, because it was already a rumor. And so yeah. I kind of, and my boss was like, just write it up really fast. Like, and then we'll send it out. And I was like, okay, fine. And so I do it. And then I didn't really see a lot of like, I saw a couple of people being like, oh my God, oh my God. But I didn't see it like explode. Um, and so then when the Daily Beast article came out, that was like, explosive article from Gawker. I was like, I really didn't think it was that because it was already a rumor. (laughs) People had already been tweeting about it. People were like, like saying, like, I forget who, but some like Broadway professional had tweeted like a hint that it, that Leah was coming on. So I was like, I'm just confirming a rumor. Like Beanie probably already knows this. They all already know, know this. I'm just like saying that it's happening. I like have a source that I trust saying that it's happening. And I'm like, it's pretty funny. Uh, and so I like, I like post it and then I truly like close my computer, close Twitter. And I went to the Adirondacks for the weekend. (laughs) And then like two weeks later, I was like, Oh, Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I mean, (laughs) this is, this is all my fault. (laughs) No, it is so fun. I don't want to say it's so funny. Obviously we're going to get into what happens next, but it's funny that you characterize it as not, you didn't feel like it was an explosion at first because I know for Matt and I, you know, our listeners do have like a little, a bunch of little group chats that we're privy to and see the conversations. And, and, and I saw like this just huge, like the, the messages were just like scrolling faster than I could keep up with them after that story came out and TikTok got a hold of it and it started spreading through that weekend. Like I remember having conversations with, I feel like at least like six or seven distinct people who were not connected to each other about that news. <laughs> and it was like every gleek in my life recovering or otherwise like came forward to be like, 
oh my god she did it she bullied her way to the top after all yeah well i think what's so wild too is that we forget that the gleeks are still out there and they're very powerful yeah. and they are very much still producing content like it's the year 2012 and people on tiktok and instagram so this was like perfect perfect I, fodder to reignite the community i saw a story the other day that said that tickets for leo michelle's i think opening night oh are going for like Twenty five hundred dollars on the real estate <laughs> market to like I imagine just gleeks like oh. can I not well, like the ticket the ticket sales were not good before though right like no the that's the thing is that be, like, like they were, were not attending as much you can look at like Broadway yeah. grosses online and Funny Girl is consistently like not at full capacity not making a ton of money compared to yeah. like the Music Man which is making three million dollars every week like oh it's God. making under a million every week. You know, I I would say I have like a tenuous grasp as a former theater person on Broadway, but seeing that I don't really know the numbers that well, which is why it's so good to have you here. Like with these ticket prices on the real sale market, I'm imagining there's not a lot of shows commanding resale prices that high, whether it is a fad or not, right? Like whether it's going to just pass by us. Like that seems ex- yeah. pretty excessive. It's really excessive. And it probably hasn't been that high since like Hamilton fever hit in oh like 2015. God. Oh my God. Another thing we cannot get into. <laughs> you no, know, we absolutely cannot. <laughs> oh my God. No, we would go for the next 30 days uninterrupted if we opened the can of worms that is Lin-Manuel Miranda. Um, so I just want to keep pushing forward just slightly because I do want to get to this post that Beanie puts out on Instagram. So obviously the post preceded the Daily Beast story by a couple, well, by an actual day. Um, on June 10th, Beanie posted on Instagram that she would be leaving the show I'm just making sure I have this detail correct. Was it already announced that she would be leaving in September and her Instagram post was, I'm actually leaving sooner than that? Or was that? Yeah, that's okay. So they announced. So I think the way this works is that she had a contract to go for a full year. And then she was like, I'm actually going to leave September 25th with alongside Jade Lynch. And then she got on Instagram and was like, JK, I'm leaving July 31st. Yeah. See you guys later. Yeah. And then Jane Lynch also. Yes. And then Jane Lynch bumped her her exit up as well. (laughs) She was like, I will not be in a room with that lady. I don't know that lady. I don't want to. She went on to say, she was like, no, it just made so much more sense for Leah and Tova Felcha to like debut on the same day. And it's like, Okay, I've heard about the Glee set. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, as a as a stunt, if I, I'm putting myself in the shoes of a stunt casting director, which this is a stunt cast, I think we can all be on the yes. same page that absolutely this is like a stunt cast to save the ticket sales, not because people are like universally praising Leah's capabilities at this role. Um, if I was in that position. I would have thought they would have fought harder to keep Jane at least for an opening night kind of moment so that it could be the yeah, Glee reunion, Leah. right? Yes. Like, that's the right. big yes. story. Those ticket here. sales would go even higher. Yes. Yeah. It, it, that would make perfect sense. And the only reason that it would not happen is if Jane was like, absolutely not. Is yeah, what she I doesn't think. want to be in the room with Leah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, Get and me I keep forgetting here. the clip from Glee where jane lynch is watching leah do the performance from funny girl she said doesn't she get up and say i'd rather i'm gonna go kill myself yeah she says i'm she's she's watching rachel do funny girl on broadway which is a thing that happens in season five oh, yes yes she, the gets, later seasons. she gets cast in okay so rachel gets cast in funny we're girl. living in the reality yeah mm-hmm. and then she's also like going to school at the same time she's like which I, would never which happen, would never happen. <laughs> no. it's like actually one of the more unrealistic things yeah. on funny girl it's very Glee. uh hillary duff being a college student and a movie star at NYU. Like yes, Gossip Girl, exactly. Like, right. <laughs> but yeah, so Sue Sylvester does say, I'm going to go kill myself. I think while <laughs> while Leah is singing, maybe My Man? No. Yes, I think, sure. it is, yeah. I think it is that one. Um, and Amazing. Just like in a meta sense, you know, deep glee truthers will know that, that they're like frequently on set. If you like know the videos to search for, or you were on Tumblr, there's so many moments of the Glee cast, like, 
laughing at Leah Michelle like while filming oh, the absolutely. show that yep. just didn't get caught by editors or the editors hated Leah and they left it in but like people like Amber Riley and just others like like mocking Leah on set like while cameras are rolling like snickering whispering to each other like there's so much like that so it is kind of <laughs> meta that Jane Lynch does get like an actual line to say they're like I am gonna kill myself <laughs> I just think about Glee was so weird. There's so many things about it, but I think the funny girl subplot coming true is just one of uh, many Ryan Murphy's prophetic undertakings that we should be more mindful of. Um, So with the Beanie Post, she announces on June 10th, on 11th, the day after Leah is announced. Like, they didn't even let the dust settle. They didn't let anything kind of smooth out. They didn't do anything. They were like, Leah's here. She's in the door. Bye, Beanie. We love you so much. Kiss, kiss, goodbye. And then on the 12th, the Daily Beast publishes a rather scathing report where they primarily use one source who... I have but that source was talking, talking, talking. talking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we'll get into that in just a second. I have so many opinions about that source and I want to pick your brain, Olivia. But basically, in this piece, the source is saying that the producers have failed Beanie. They knew that the show was a failure. They knew that she wasn't set up for the role properly and that she couldn't carry the show. And that realistically, they should have gotten it gotten rid of her sooner or shuffled her out sooner and that they basically failed their duty of care in regards to not just how it was on set but the departure and that after your piece had gone live she had actually stopped talking to producers allegedly and communication on set uh, not on set sorry we're so used to talking about hollywood communication backstage had effectively crumbled and it was non-existent (laughs) and it was a contentious war zone as this little gossip backstage would have it what were your initial opinions about that daily beast story not only just because it involved you um in a interesting way but just realistically top down what was your feelings after reading it i thought that like that source um, had kind of said everything that I was thinking. Like, when those reviews came out, I was like, how do you even go on? Like, if you're Beanie and you get those reviews, how are you ever going to be like, well, time to do another, like, eight months of this show? Right. Like, like I, you got to leave. And you, and you have to be surrounded by a team that's like, you got to leave. Like, for the sake of everyone involved, she should have, I think they say we should have like ushered her out like three weeks after the reviews came out. And I think like if I had been in charge, I often think if I was in charge, what would I be doing? Yeah. I would have given like the narrative because her understudy, Julie Benko, is apparently incredible, like Yum. star in the making. She is a perfect Fanny Bryce. She looks a lot like Fanny Bryce. Um, I was like, oh, so the narrative should have been. Beanie couldn't hack it. All love. Here is this girl's chance to have her yeah. actual Barbra Streisand moment right. and like rise to the occasion and take over the show and become like a big star. Um, and I just think that like every detail of that piece made me like clutch my pearls yes. even more. Like the fact that like Beanie and Leah have the same theater agent is like. That is a snake in the grass. Like, what There's is going on There's a story very much untold there. Yeah. I was also, kind of like... Wasn't, wasn't the whole thing with the producers, too, trying to, like, double down on Beanie and trying to say, like, no, we we're going to just focus on other aspects of her personality. Yeah, they were like, we're going to focus on, like, the, the comedy ability. of the show. We're going to focus on her as, like, a comedian, which is, like... But I was reading those reviews, too, where they're, like, the way that she kind of just appears in her, like, personality was kind of childlike or, like, it just felt very immature or weird for it also. So yeah. it felt like it really was grasping at straws. Yeah, that's what's yeah, interesting I, about the Fanny Bryce character. Because remember, I mean, if even if you just go by what most people's imagination is, which is the movie, it is like the life story of Fanny Bryce. And you do need to be able to inhabit a little bit more of the mature qualities of like the later musical, right? Because she starts out very young and it goes through her life. And I think what a lot of people picked up on is Beanie can't really progress past that 20 year old like doe-eyed childlike performance that i think yeah. she's kind of rested on for a lot of her career yeah i just think i mean 
what I have been telling everyone I talk to about this is that like she just shouldn't have been cast in no. the first place. Like this is the this fault is whoever was like, I actually have a really good idea. What if we get Beanie Feldstein? And it's like, come on, guys. They they heard her sing. They like did the whole thing, and they were still like, we can make this work. And yeah. sometimes you have to know when something is not going to work out and just kind of embrace that. Yeah, I want early to, on. I wanted to ask because we aren't the Broadway people. Like, what is the normal procedure for this? I mean, this can't be the only time in Broadway history recently where they have cast someone who hasn't worked out for the role. It's obviously not always this public, but there does have to be some kind of back and forth right backstage that trickles out into the public. Is it usually more graceful than this? Do you have any kind of understanding of that? I'm trying to think about like the last time someone was like, really miscast in a role it was oh it was it's usually stunt casting so usually okay. when a celebrity is like stunt cast in a show like there was i think it was cameron dallas who was like a vine star was cast in mean girls as like a replacement oh, for I forgot about that yeah one. as like the <laughs> the love interest as aaron and he was horrible and everyone was no. like he is horrible and instead of like, and he had like a short stint or yeah. whatever, just like bring in ticket sales, but they ended up like cutting parts where he had to sing because <laughs> everyone was like, he sucks at this. <laughs> and everyone knows so, that musical by now. And right? everyone, like, yeah. And so people cool. were like, everyone, that was the last time I remember everyone in like online theater circles being like, what is going on here? Is it even selling that many tickets? But like, usually it is not this public and usually it's like, a stunt casting flop because it's yeah. hard to find like a trained musical star who is like not very good at singing <laughs> <laughs> does do we know what is beanie's theater training i know that she's been in dramatic programs before she, but is she's not classically musically i trained, don't know right? i know that she's she's like from LA she went to that like famous person LA high school yes um and she's been besties with Ben Platt her entire life so I'm sure that rubs yeah. off on you in one way or another <laughs> but I actually don't know what her like background is yeah there was a funny story that I was while I was just doing background for this interview I found the Vogue cover that not cover but like the Vogue story that they did the spread about Fanny Bryce and Beanie and I think it's called like how Beanie found, like, found her way to Fanny Bryce. And, like, I controlled that father, dad, and, like, nowhere in that piece did they mention that one of her parents is a producer on the show, which I do think kind of illustrates maybe how she found her way to the role. I don't want to say it was obviously all that. I do think, just like Leah, she was stunt cast a little bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think the only non-Broadway people that understand stunt casting are, like, when Nene Leakes and Lisa Rinna and Erica Jane have all played Roxy Hart in one fashion. Yes. Oh my God. The Chicago stunt casting is always kind of a sleigh. Like but that's they the just had Pamela Anderson yes. do it. And apparently she was really good. Yeah. I was like, and I think people don't care about Chicago because that has been on Broadway yeah. for like a hundred years straight, right? Like it's not the big revival, right? Like this was the big comeback of Fanny. So there was a lot, I think, writing on it, culturally speaking, that you don't have for something like Chicago, right? Like people aren't as emotionally no. invested in that. At and least, I the think. only person who has ever played Fanny Bryce is Barbara Streisand. Yes. So there's that whole thing. So it's like they had never done it. Like they did the musical with Barbara. It makes Barbara the biggest star in the world at yes. like... 23 or however old she was she was like very young yeah they do the movie and then they never revive it on broadway until this one so it's not like it's a show where like they had been reviving it around town forever it's not one of those shows it's not like um you know anything goes where it's like oh we've seen this a million times like let's see what sutton foster can bring to it but like it is there was so much weight on this revival because people have been trying to do it for so long. Yeah. Yeah. That's, what's crazy to me is like, it does really lend, I think a little bit of weight to how badly she was set up from the very beginning that the only other frame of reference people have for Fanny Bryce exactly. is Barbara Streisand. And like, no matter what you could be 
better than Barbara. You could be more talented than Barbara. I mean, I would like to see people try, but you could be <laughs> all of those things and you are going up against a mountain, right? Like there yes. it is an impossible mountain to climb. Um, and to do it with someone so public facing, I just felt like that was a PR nightmare waiting to happen no matter what, right? Like there was bound to be something. And that's also why it's like, Leah is such a safe bet because as we know, she has been publicly auditioning for this yeah. for over a decade. I was going to say she's field tested. Like, yes, they like she know. sang, she yeah. sang like seven uh, funny girl songs on Glee. She has been singing it all over town forever. I was doing, I was writing something about how she's been publicly auditioning for this forever. She once sang this to Barbara at a Barbara Streisand tribute. Like yes. she has been out in these streets saying, cast me as Fanny for a million years. It, it makes it weirder that they didn't end up going with her in the beginning. Well, it's there was really okay. making it feel more. Oh, okay. wait. Oh. I saw. Tell us. Tell I us. saw a blind mm-hmm. item on Crazy Days and Nights, I believe, that said that oh. uh, Barbara had say in who got cast. <gasps> and she was she said yes to Beanie originally, <laughs> but she said no about Leah Michelle. She originally Shut didn't, according up. to Crazy Days and Nights. So it's like all conjecture. But yeah. apparently they were like Leah and she was like, absolutely not. So in some ways, I'm like... The thing is, I believe that more than... I believe it. And I also wouldn't be surprised if Barbara Streisand was like, I'm going to tank this shit. I am going to burn it down to the ground. Absolutely. (laughs) No one's going to do it like me. Gotta love Crazy Days and Nights because that blind item was sandwiched in between two posts about like Johnny Depp and the Bohemian Grove. Like you win some some and you lose some with Crazy Days and Nights. uh, Shout out to NT who has been putting in the work for so many years. Yeah, maybe he should take a nap. So there's some interesting tweets that I think kind of paint out the like broader picture of what's really going on, like the mood after Leah was announced. Adam Feldman, timeout reporter, had tweeted a couple of different things days apart after the Gawker story and the Daily Beast story came out. First, he says, quote, it's really hitting the fan. There was a lot of screaming. So get the popcorn because the next two weeks are going to be messy and wild. And they have been. A day after the Daily Beast story dropped, Adam also tweeted, for what it's worth, a new dispatch from behind the scenes at Funny Girl. Backstage Tuesday night was like being... (laughs) Reading through this tweet is going to kill me. Backstage Tuesday night was like being one of the senators hiding out on January 6th. Really ugly. (laughs) Everyone is afraid. (laughs) <laughs> everyone is afraid keep your head down and try to avoid getting the look the daily beast oh, was Jesus. a lot of shit people are trying to cover their asses now they are trying to make lovely julie look bad because beanie is convinced people turned on her because of julie everyone but beanie loves julie july for 31st cannot get here soon enough so that's kind of one of the other things is of course just it would be just like leah michelle to tank the career of an aspiring up-and-coming star <laughs> for her own uh, desperate claw to fame and success. Um, I feel like Julie has really received the shit end of the stick because not only are you actually better in the role, but you will not be getting the role and the world's most famous bully will be getting the role instead of you <laughs> while you just kind of endure the torrent of shit coming at you from basically every corner of the internet at the moment. I think Julie is going to come out of this completely on top. She has like a whole month of performances in between Beanie and Leah. And then when Leah comes on, she's still doing the show once a week. So like one night Leah is off and that will always be Julie's night. And I think everyone is kind of going to look at this and be like, that girl deserved better. Like let's give her her own shot. Cause this is always going to be part of her story is that she was kind of like just caught in this maelstrom like and i think people who do see her are going to be like that's incredible she is a star and we actually have to like figure out something for her like i think she'll this she's i think she's pretty young she will end up on top of this whole situation it really must be brutal for beanie to have people read review say, leave reviews that say that her understudy was a better worthy attempt. yeah i know her like buying more tickets to your understudies night than yours it's literally, <laughs> it's literally your worst nightmare like i don't i wouldn't know how to have a career after that either so i do <laughs> want to quickly play one thing i don't know if everyone has seen this but 
Beanie has released a... Uh, oh my God, this video. This new video. Yes. Okay. So I'm glad mm. one of us have seen it. Oh yes. No, I think I've seen this one. Well. So we will be playing this just very briefly. Um, Beanie released a new report from Backstage that is... Um, a lot of conflicting feelings, I feel like. I'm very curious to hear what we all have to say, but just for the viewers' sake, I'm gonna play this really briefly. Hey, everybody, I'm just, uh, just checking in. What have I missed? Um, what's, what's, what's been going on? I'll start. Um, I just got back from the years I was a doctor who told me that I have tonsillitis, which is extremely contagious, and she cannot allow me to go back on the stage through the weekend um, until I have enough antibiotics in my system to not be contagious anymore. I, the last thing I would want on this earth is to get the people that I love um, sick. And I, I just am not allowed to go on stage through the weekend. I am cannot wait to do my last two weeks and you just you gotta laugh at a certain point um if you notice the comments are turned off yes on that post oh yeah Oh yeah, <laughs> they are completely turned off. No, I and the last few posts in a row. Yeah. She does. She does sound like she has tonsillitis. She does. No, also, we will not be debating. This feels straight out of a Ryan Murphy production, though. Like they, Leo, like Leia would take the role. Someone would pull up their phone and watch. He this should make a Instagram. season. Oh my god, he should make a season of Feud about this. Yeah. That is where. <laughs> Just give it five years. All right. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> now that is amazing. So she releases this. The one thing that we didn't get to, but is pretty funny, is she ends the video by saying. When it rains, it pours on your old pal <laughs> Bean. <laughs> Our old pal Bean. I kind of like that she's like taking this on the chin. Like I, she seems to think it's kind of funny. I hope so. I hope the, that's a genuine reaction. <laughs> I feel like we all know the exact feeling that went through her when she said, "I cannot wait." to get through my last two weeks of performance. Like the feeling in that was so palpable. Like you could just tell how over it that she is at this moment. Like there's nothing better that could have happened to her than getting tonsillitis right before the last two weeks of shows. Like this is the best day of her life to date. Oh my God, that video. So the, uh, the other thing is, I think we need to kind of touch down a little bit on Leah. So we've kind of been talking in the background, but like with Leah Michelle, she has come off a very public cancellation, right? Like she was one of the few cancellations of summer 2020, at least like lower tier, not for sexual misconduct or anything like that, where it actually stuck. I mean, she lost a lot of subscribers she lost a lot of sponsors. She lost a lot of her business deals. People were pulling out of deals with her. She was being disinvited places. And what had briefly happened, just super quick, um, Samantha Ware, alongside some other former Glee co-stars, basically accused Leah of creating a hostile work environment on Glee. They accused her of racism and targeted bullying, basically saying things like, in a very brief amount of words, you can't really sit with us because you're not really Glee stars, right? Like, just targeting most of them. A lot of them were black, and so that definitely played into it. And Samantha Ware was one of the first to tweet about it and bring it to light. Leah eventually posted an apology about it um, that I think a lot of people felt was inconclusive, but was one of many apologies we got in the summer of 2020. And then she kind of went dark for the last two years. I mean... She hasn't had any shows. She hasn't been debuting anything. I think there was a book either right before or right after, but I haven't heard anything from her. It's been pretty much mums the word. No, she's been laying low. And don't forget that one of the things she said to someone on Glee is that she was going to shit in their wig, which is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't, can't be understated how horrible it would be to have um, Leah Michelle's shit in your wig. Like, truly, what a nightmare. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I do think she like fully she like this has been whoever is running her publicity has been doing an excellent job of it because she's been laying low. She's been not doing anything. 
And then she comes back with the role that we have all wanted her to do yeah. for a decade. And so everyone is suddenly like, well, we like her again because she's doing the thing we want her to do. Yeah. And so, like, you know, jury's out on whether she's listened and learned and will not be terrorizing backstage at Funny Girl. Oh, and then there was the Spring Awakening documentary where she and Jonathan Groff were going on that huge press tour and she was like, I showed him my vagina. <laughs> oh, yes. That. <laughs> we talked about that very about briefly, that. Matt. Yes. The Spring Awakening. <laughs> there was a bunch of videos. Is insane. There's a TikTok I'll send you after this of someone pretending to be Leah's publicist and hearing the news that Leah had revealed this in the promotional tour for this movie. Um, I feel like no one knew that that happened that no that was new information yeah that was oh oh the, oh, just, the vagina thing was new information but the documentary, the documentary itself i just came and went right like it was such a non -issue. not in the theater oh. space we all loved it if you oh, were a spring really? awakening head it was like really moving yeah <laughs> and like it was kind of like a big moment there's also a really good clip in it where she's warming up and she sings the riff to defying gravity as like her warm-up that kind of like went viral on TikTok. She's like, ah, but like belts it in her hotel room. But it's like that that was kind of image rehab for her amongst her like true blue community, which are like kids who were obsessed with Spring Awakening at an inappropriate age. age yes. <laughs> um, I think also the duality of the gossip press is kind of exemplified in this story a lot. I mean, as a gossip reporter myself, you know, I was looking at the Daily Beast this morning and they just dropped a story. So, you know, they had this scorching backstage piece about Funny Girl. And then they published a piece this morning that was like, don't let Leah Michelle bully her way to the top. And I was like, this is how it is with celebrity reporters. We do want to have it both ways. We do want the juicy bit, but then we also want to follow behind ourselves and be like, no, no, no. Like, but remember, we don't want her to bully. Like, we're still bad. The bullying is still bad, but also we love this story and we will be following it intently for the next six months. I also want to say the last time I, I was gonna say the only thing that she's really been in the press for also the last like two years except for the um, lovely vagina story is probably her illiteracy allegations that feel like again they still don't die again like people in TikTok will bring that up every like three to four months and I'm just like it's impressive at this point like Ryan Murphy had to make a statement last year and everything and the people who started that rumor have also been like they did it fully as a joke. As a joke. And yeah, it, was it has completely like completely like gone off the rails and they're like, please stop talking about it. Like we know she's not. We were joking and you guys are not. <laughs> yes. No, it's it's such like a good example once again of like the late glee fandom versus the people that were there at the beginning. Like I just don't feel like teenagers maybe have the uh as the French would say, Jenny's say quoi of uh, <laughs> <laughs> that we might have had with our media consumption back in the day. Um, well, to wrap this up, I do want to ask you, Olivia, out of every Glee performance, out of every Glee song, it doesn't have to be Leah centric. Do you have one off the top of your head that's like your absolute go to every time? OK, I the one I listen to the most is Teenage Dream, because I think Oh, it's yeah. really That's good the, the original one, one not any of the t other times they yeah. sang it um <laughs> but and then also the mashup of rumor has it someone like you that santana sings yeah. after she's been outed <laughs> which is oh, iconic to me that was a moment indeed i have so many but i feel like if i was to give like the ones that just came to my head immediately it's obviously naya rivera doing not just Amy Winehouse, but also Me Against the Music with Britney. Also, oh, yes, the Me Against the Music. Yeah, the whole Britney so episode good. was Britney oh, legendary. Um, legendary. Also, obviously, River Deep Mountain High, right? Like that song, yes. Amber and Naya, like that song, like moved me as a teenager. And then I think the last one would be. I know, again, cancel me, everybody, but Leah doing It's All Coming Back to Me Now. Like, that was such a good I mean, it's like she, also her doing um, Taking Chances is really good. Yes, yeah. No, that's the thing is, it's like, she's so rotten, but she kills mm -hmm. that song. Like, she eats. Absolutely. She ate. Matt, do you have one? 
Oh, I was going to say, so embarrassing also to admit, probably the Rocky Horror covers are honestly pretty fun every once in a while. Yeah. Listen to those ones. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, deep cut. Next, you're wow. going to say Jane Lynch doing uh, literally <laughs> anything. I was going to say, yeah, Jane is Nikki. <laughs> will, uh, no, horrifying, forever. horrifying curse. I, no, honestly, I was going to say the Britney ones also are like my favorite. And then, I won't lie, the Bohemian Rhapsody one's pretty funny to listen to, only because that was such an iconic season finale. Like, that's one of the, honestly, the first season of Glee is such a perfect encapsulation oh, yeah. of the time and place in history with television and that finale is just so good it's honestly. the only way to really Still explain post 9 11 america i think like it is a <laughs> cultural <laughs> artifact that we should dedicate majors in high college to um well that's all i got i mean what a time is there anything you're looking forward to with this will you be trying to get your own five million dollar ticket to leah's opening night Olivia? i don't know i'm gonna try to see i'm gonna try to see julie i think that's kind oh, of good. like the safe neutral option i feel i might also see lee i want to see all three of them that's my problem i'm not made of money so if someone really rich wants to like bankroll me to see all three fannies i would love that um but yeah, I think I'm just gonna go try to see Julie call it a day. Yeah, you should. Parker uh, needs to send you out for that. They need say, to have you do a compare and contrast know. chart. You know, get a like, get on, a trench coat and a bowler it. hat and slap down a briefcase <laughs> of the Bustle Digital Group executive suite and be like, "I need you to put me boots on the ground that opening night, right? Like, <laughs> pull some strings." <laughs> <sighs> Well, that was uh, this was such a fun conversation. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank and you so much for having a joy. me. This was a joy. If uh, there's any breaking news about this, feel free to come on, stop by, tell us. I will come right on back. Yeah, please oh, yeah, come no. running back, really. Stat. Like, if I if I, I see Leah, I will come back and tell you guys oh, all about it. Don't just uh, just get your phone out, make an audio message, and just <laughs> start right there. Right, like do some on the ground <laughs> pop recording. Of course, with Leah. Yeah, mm -hmm. please. We beg mm -hmm. of you. Well, do you have anything you want to promo? Please, this is the time. Tell the girls where to find you, what um, to do. You guys can, yeah, where can we find you? follow me on Twitter um, at Olivia Craighead um, and read me at Gawker.com. You can read all of us at Gawker.com. It is all very funny girls. Yeah. That is what the G in Gawker now stands for girls. <laughs> God bless. Yeah, no, you guys have really Love been it. killing the, especially the gossip stuff. Obviously, that's like my bread and butter. I live by that, die by it. Um, but also the Real Housewives stuff. Everyone who writes about Real Housewives <sighs> at Gawker, please tell them I love them. They're special I to absolutely me and will. I hold them close to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, I absolutely will. your pieces are incredible. Um, well, guys, that's it. You can find us at Eating for Free. You can find us at underscore Eating for Free if you don't want to go to our website, our Patreon, backslash Eating for Free on Patreon. You can find me everywhere at Laura Croft Barbie. And you can find him at underscore Matthew Lawson because he still hasn't paid the scammer who stole the one without the underscore, the million dollars required to get his actual name on I Twitter. I swear to God, it's an endless battle. We'll, no, we'll never see peace. You will be hearing from our lawyers. We're actually getting Leah Michelle's representation to, you know, blaze forward with this case for us um feisty group yeah and also go check out our minion stuff on patreon we are doing a five-part mini series about the minions and whether or not they would have worked oh for my god Hitler over on patreon <laughs> so <laughs> listen now it's one what's up matt oh amazing oh no i was just gonna say there's also the preview of that should be already on the main feed yeah so you'll hear for that our minion stream yeah yeah well Amazing it has stuff. been a really good the one. hardest hitting report yeah um <laughs> olivia we're gonna ask you now to sing with us our goodbye okay great um it's very simple goodbye very simple i'll great. count us down on three <laughs> three good goodbye. come on you know the words let's go what do i think of her yes i don't think of her Here I go. Oh. Where to go? in the New York fucking post. I just can't even. Excuse me. I need to go kill myself.